Jack and Trevino hit it, their weight goes to the right foot and back to the left before they ever start the downswing. They're back on the front axis, then they make a counterfall, and then they turn. Of course, you won't ever hear the counterfall spoken of in any of the golf material that you read. It's basically a, an invisible move to the naked eye. The counterfall is what initiates effortless rotation. And that, this is why Freddie Couples looks so effortless when he hits the golf ball is because he knows how to initiate rotation without doing it internally from out of his own power. If a person doesn't know that his golf swing has to, that his delivery has to start from an off vertical attitude, then he's dead going in. A person that goes out there and tries to play from a standpoint of solidarity, he will never hit a golf ball like Freddie Couples if he stands there for a thousand years. Because that's not what Freddie's doing. Freddie goes off vertical, drops his arms, and turns. What you want in the golf swing is a net effect of stability or equilibrium in the rotation. So before you start the delivery, you have to go off vertical in an increment that is sufficient to offset the weight of the arms and club as they swing in front of you, the speed that they're traveling, and the distance that they're traveling as they come down. When you hit the golf ball, you have two options in hitting the golf ball. You can hit the golf ball with all of your weight, meaning every pound in your body can compre compress that ball, or you can hit it with just the weight of your arms. This is how 99.9% .9 of all golfers hit the ball. When that mass falls on the golf ball, it creates a completely different tone when it compresses the ball. This is what David was looking for when he looked for the gravity swing. He could hear the difference in the striking of the ball from Trevino and Jack, but he couldn't see a difference in the swing. And the difference he was hearing was more mass hitting the golf ball, 200 pounds of mass. If you see an individual uh, like Noah, for example, when he comes down, you can watch him frame for frame his mass will move in every frame. There is no point where you're going to see the arms gaining on the mass rotation. I had a, an interesting conversation with Lee Trevino um, a couple of years ago, and he had been talking to one of the young guys that was on the long drive tour. And he said, Lee, I, I don't get it. They keep clocking me on the speed gun at 147 miles an hour, I keep getting outdriven by a kid that clocks 115. And my comment to Lee was, everyone's obsessed with club head speed. They need to be obsessed with connected foot pounds at impact. He said, that's right. He says, if my club head's moving 106 miles an hour, he says, I want my body moving 107. See, we don't want to come in with a faster moving club head and less mass. We want to, actually, we want to have a slower moving club head and more mass. That way that ball stays under control. Everyone's obsessed with club head speed. They need to be obsessed with connected foot pounds at impact. we got to go off vertical and then pivot, just like a, a discus thrower, or a, you can see it in a hammer thrower, he'll go significantly off vertical because the weight of the hammer and the chain are so heavy. He's not only offsetting the weight of the hammer and the chain, but he's got a huge set of arms on top of that that he's swinging in front of him. So he's got to go off and then rotate. You can see a, a tennis professional go way off vertical before they start that serve to keep the arm and the tennis racket from pulling them out of balance in the downswing. You can see a soccer style place kicker go off vertical and then swing. There's a reason that the rotary kick overtook the straightaway kick in football. They have superior technique 
according to the physics laws than someone that kicks straight on. A rotary kicker puts the weight of his whole mass through impact where a straightaway kicker kicks with only the weight of his leg.